Hello, good morning, and welcome to the Daily on Neko Television, where we keep you updated with the happenings from the Nigerian newspaper. We will recall that yesterday, Labour and the President had a meeting, but they are yet to come to a conclusion as they will continue, you know, further um, talking and also seeing what can be done concerning the minimum wage, maybe from next week, and then seeing what will be the new minimum wage. I am Sarah Elisha Dasham. You can join us, drop your comment, your views on Facebook and on YouTube. I'll be doing the program with Lois Drake. Good morning. Good morning, Sarah. Thank God it's Friday. Yeah. How excited are you about that? Very excited. <laughs> Believe me. <laughs> All right. Let's go through the papers. And I will be taking the first paper, which is The Voice of Liberty. NLC TUC insists on 250,000 Naira new minimum wage to meet Tinubu next week. You can find more detail of that in the paper. Sinibu fires Buhari's in-law, MD of Nigerian Security Printing Co., and four others. And on alleged 80 billion naira fraud, Yahya Bello remains wanted, coming from the EFCC. And on local government financial autonomy, Ramalan Chairman Kaduna Restoration Group hails the Supreme Court verdict, command President Sinibu. The Renew Kaduna Restoration Group, RKRG, has hailed the Supreme Court judgment on local government financial autonomy against the 36 state governors in favor of the federal government. Alleged 33 billion naira fraud court remands Buhari's ex power minister Mamam in prison. Return local government funds or face legal action, Sirap tells the 36 governors, including the FCT minister, which happens to be WK. Samoa agreement threat to Nigerian sovereignty coming from Catholic bishops. And downside on insecurity, military uncovers plan attack on critical infrastructure. More detail found in the paper, and that's all on Voice of Liberty. The Daily Times newspaper from the top, we have FG Mo's Youth Enterprise Cluster worth 110 billion naira. This is coming from Shatima, the Vice President. Samoa Agreement proposed amendment to withdraw if EU rejects CBC and tells federal government. If you're interested in more, in more of this particular story, you can find it on page two. How to investigate dispute between PSC and IGP. More details you can find on page six. Kogi governorship a court affirms Ododo's election. You can find more details on page eight. The big story here says Supreme Court upholds local government autonomy. And the writer says declares joins accounts illegal, orders federal government to pay allocations directly to local government accounts. Bars governors from dissolving democratically elected LG officials, Tinibu Atiku CUPP hail verdict. And uh, Sala, I think I hail the verdict as well, because looking at all these years of uh, <clears throat> of the ups and downs for local government to have mm. their autonomy, and finally now the Supreme Court has um, has given the verdict that they should have separate accounts. They, uh, they should not have that joint account is illegal mm -hmm. and then the federal government should pay allocations directly to local government accounts mm -hmm. and there's the, uh, the governors are not to dissolve democratically elected local government officials and even the president and the former uh, vice president of Nigeria are hailing this particular verdict and like I said earlier I am hailing the verdict as well because I think it will go a long way for local government to be able to achieve what they are being set up for because um, <clears throat> it is the third year of government and so far so good we've seen that it has been neglected in a way that uh, the states have, have not really given them the opportunity to do that which they are supposed to do because uh, like we know they are the grassroots um, close more closer to the people and they're supposed to give to be the ears of the people and so i think when they now if they have their uh financial autonomy they should be able to do much more than what they have been doing in the past years looking at when you sometimes when you even go to the local government secretaries you can hardly find people or want some particular like you can the place is kind of redundant for me i will say that in a in, in a way but now I'm hoping that with this verdict, 
more things will see uh, significant changes happening from the local government to you the know, people. Very true, very true, Lois, because just like you said, uh, this will happen to be, I think the, um, the Senate gave their own um, approval concerning the local government autonomy since 2022. Mm. And we know that that's not even the first time it's been submitted in the House. They have been back and forth, back and forth. And I mean, finally, when we saw that there was finally local government autonomy, as well as also the judiciary for them to also have their autonomy. A number of people were excited. I clearly remember during one of our shows, which happens to be National Talk, I asked um, one of the, the member House of Assembly from the State House of Assembly, and I said, what would happen if governors refused to approve the local government autonomy? And he said, they are supposed to be stoned. Lois, I believe that by now we're supposed to be stoning the members of the State House of Assembly. Reason mm. why? Because they refused. Because if you ask me, yes, I know that... Um, the local government autonomy more was like was in the hands of the governors. But I keep asking this question, why do our state house of assembly refuse to function as they are supposed to? Mm. Do they really know what their responsibilities are? Do they even know what their job is demands of them? They have the right to even impeach a governor if you're not doing the right thing. But have we ever seen that happening? Apart from what is happening in River State, where we are having the pro um members and together with the governor giving him a tough time that he's, he really cannot have a hold of what is happening in his state. Why am I bringing all of this is the fact that just like you said, you are happy about the verdict and I am excited as well. But I hope that beyond the verdict, we'll have a body that will make sure that this is being implemented. It's one thing for the Supreme Court to say, yes, henceforth, the local government should have their own separate account. But who is going to follow the governors to be sure that they do that? Mm. This is not the first time we're having a verdict coming from a court and then we see people refusing to follow. They do what they feel like doing. I remember during the Buhari's regime, he also raised a concern where we see that certain allocation that's been given to the local government or even to the state governor, we're seeing governors using it to make flyover bridges. Mm. And I asked the question, if people are hungry, who's going to use those flyover bridges? Mm -hmm. So just like you rightly stated, I'm hoping that with this verdict coming from the court, we'll see this body language coming from our governors willing to let the local government operate on their own. You make mention on the example of the secretariat. How about the primary health clinics? Mm. When you go there, you can really tell that if this is really a primary health clinic. And the reason why it is called primary because you're supposed to have access to it first, just like you said, it's closer to the people. But right now we're saying that when you go there, even malaria kits you can't find in some of these primary health clinics. Some of them are looking very, very abandoned. And then you can really tell that even the infrastructure that's supposed to be there are not there. So we are hoping that with this, we'll begin to see things improving. We'll begin to see development in our local government areas. And I mean, people will begin to feel very proud to associate themselves with their local government areas. So we look forward to seeing what this verdict will mean for every of the states. Eventually. Definitely, Sally. We look forward to that. And back to the paper, we're still on the Daily Times. Tinubu to labor leaders, I'm concerned about workers committed to just realistic minimum wage. And the last year, it yes, says military uncovers plans to attack some critical infrastructure in Nigeria. This is coming from the spokesperson. And you are in, if you're interested in the story, you can find more details on page five. These are all the news stories you can find on the Daily Times newspaper. All right, let's take a look at the next paper, which is the Friday Leadership newspaper. And on minimum wage, tenable labor adjourn for more consultation. More detail found on page seven. And why we want, we want to ask how much more consultation do the presidency and the federal government need to do before we finally have a minimum wage? You can read more detail of that on page seven. Alleged fraud we have called to try Ganduji seven others in absentee. More detail found on page 18. Stayed on the federal government um, autonomy, the local government financial autonomy. Rather, we are having Supreme Court judgment throws up national debate where we have Tinibu, Atiku, LP and others hail the judgment. We will obey Apex Court verdict, says Soludo Otsu. It's an assault on true federalism coming from Iburi and then 50% of Nigerians' problems solved coming from Nugi, which is the union for local government areas. Lawyers differ on verdict and then governors meet virtually. Local government areas collected 9.28 trillion naira in five years. More detail of that can be found on page four. 
And here was trending. Ghanaian chef arrested for faking the Guinness World Record Award that is concerning the cooking. You can read more detail of that inside the paper. And on numbers, MTNC it contributed 549.3 billion naira in taxes and levies. Both stories can be found on page two. Defense headquarters alert on plan to attack critical infrastructure. And so this is a warning as well to people to be very careful of places and facilities that they find themselves. Here we are having Morplex TV CEO hails reps for backing local businesses. More data found on page 29. And we have a picture story. This is talking about some of the stakeholders as well as the executive director of Zenit Bank. You can take a look at the paper and read more detail of any other story that is of interest to you. The Nigerian Tribune, the big story here, says financial autonomy for local government. Tinibu Atiku Uzukome, NLC Algon, LP, NULGE, others hail Supreme Court's judgment. You can find details on page five and six, and it says Apex Court orders direct payment of allocation from federation account to 774 local government areas stops governors from tampering with funds meant for councils bars governors from dissolving local governments with judgment only officials elected will control resources of the people this is coming from tinibu and return local government area funds or face legal action Sarap tells governors 50% of Nigeria's problems solved. This is coming from NULGE and granting financial autonomy to LGs, a setback on principles of federalism. This is coming from Ibori. From the top of the paper, we have alleged 33 billion Naira fraud. Court orders ex Minister of Power, Sali Mamon, to be remanded in Kuche prison. Timubu's meeting with labor leaders says no deal yet on new minimum wage meeting to reconvene in one week. You can find more details on page 11 of Nigerian Tribune. And the down part of the paper, we have couple arrested for allegedly trying to sell their two-year-old baby to fund Jakpa. How sad. Koyukuba, appeal court of for affirms Ododo's election, dismisses SDP at Jaka's appeal. If you are interested, you can find more details on page four. And the last story here says terrorists targeting national critical infrastructure. DHQ says these are all the news stories you can find on Nigerian Tribune. Right on Blueprint newspaper, NADDC embraces CKD production capacity of auto industry. Chief Imam of Joss Adam dies at 80. You can find that in the paper. Blue Economy Key to Youth Empowerment coming from Oye Tola. And on Olympics, Kanu Izuku swells the Super Falcon camp to 20. And we have troops for attack on critical infrastructure kill 187 terrorists. And on local government autonomy, Tinubu, Algo, Serap. CMPP and others hailed the Supreme Court landmark judgment. More detail found in the paper. Tinibu assured workers as party with labor continues next week. We are looking at economic index of over 250,000 naira coming from labor. Here we have federal government to raise 300 billion naira through July bond offer. 70% of Nigerians refused to pay bribes in 2023 coming from MBS. Two prison inmates die of cholera in Kalega State. You can find that as well on page 6. Composition of PECC will boost inv investors' confidence, economic growth coming from the LCCI. And that's all on Blueprint newspaper. Coming to the Nation newspaper, ex-minister on 33.8 billion Naira fraud trial collapses outside courtroom enter 43rd olubadon or Kulain, ancient city agog you can find details on page 16 and 29 appeal court upholds ododo's election as kogi governor and government oil producers agree on crude supply to local refineries you can find details 
of this uh, news stories on page six and page seven of the nation newspaper and colloquium for Olatunji Dari at 80 holds July 17th and troops foil terrorist plan you can find more details on page six the big story here says governors lose financial control over local government and there's a picture story here of Tinibu and um, the NLC and the TUC president uh, after the meeting I, I, I guess they took this picture after the meeting on the minimum wage and Tinibu says I'm committed to a just realistic wage talks with labor leaders to reconvene next week and uh, we have Akpabio warns PSC IG Ogbetokun over police recruitment face up. If you are interested in any of this story, you can check them on the Nation newspaper. Right, in this day's newspaper, federal government oil producers agree on valuable crude supply framework to local refineries. The writer has seen NUPRC direct refiners to provide monthly price quota on oil supply. Dongote refinery ramps up import of U.S. crew by 16 million barrels so far. And coming from the CBN Governor Cardoso, monetary policy yielding positive sign as moon-on-moon -moon inflation slows by 50%. After meeting labor leaders, Tinibu says Nigerian workers deserve improved welfare and better wages call for realistic expect expectation over the minimum wage. Meeting adjourned to next week without new position. Ajera say no negotiation status quo remains. President Canvas's wage review every two years. More detail found on page five. And on the Supreme Court verdict, it's act of gross misconduct paying local government allocation through states. Condemn the solution running of local government by caretaker committee. Tinibu says verdict is historic, will enhance Nigerian true federal fabric. It's a win of Nigerian people that Tiku asset, uh, and then we have a Pabio Abbas Fabemi Sodudu hails the decision, and as well we are seeing Ibori saying it's an assault on true federalism. You can see more stories of that on page five. Here we have the picture story, Zenet Bank Capital Market Today. And downside of the paper, I never challenged my late husband over an affair with Helen Priest. Ajaye tells the court, more data found on page 9 of the paper. And that's all in this day newspaper. On the Daily Sun newspaper, we have a big story here that says, Steamboat welcomes local government autonomy. Says judgment will enhance true federal structure. Pabio Abbas Governors Atiku LP Labor Algon I Park Huriwa Sons others hail Supreme Court verdict. You can find more details on page six. On the top of the paper, we have Samoa Agreement proposed amendment or withdrawal. Catholic bishops tell federal government. And there's a picture story of um uh, Zenit Bank during Capital Market Day at the Civic Center, Victoria Island in Lagos yesterday. And from the left, we have Executive Directors, Zenit Bank PLC, Adam Mulawani, Adobe Mwapa, Henry Oro, Founder and Chairman, Dr. Jim Ovia, Group Managing Director, Stroke Chief Executive, Dr. Adora Umioji, Executive Directors, Akin Oguranti, Louise Odom and Chief Financial Officer Mukhtar Adam during that particular market day. And moving forward, we have reps move to project journalists against arbitrary arrest and detention. You can find more details on page four of Daily Sun newspaper. Nigeria paying for consequences of 27 trillion narrow ways and means loan. This is coming from Cardoso, the CBN governor on minimum wage, federal government, labor talks deadlocked. To meet again in seven days, 62,000 Naira, 250,000 Naira still on card. I'm committed to just realistic wage. This is coming from the president, Ninimbu. On judicial matters, we have appeal court upholds Ododo's election as Kogi governor. 
Ajaka SDP candidate heads to Supreme Court if you're interested. In more of this, you can find it on page four. And bribery reporting rises to 8.6% from 3.6%, says NBS survey. And pay TV, more plex balls hails reps, six intervention for sector. If you're interested, you can find more details on page 27. And these are all the news stories you can find on Daily Sun newspaper. Write a look at the Guardian newspaper. Arrested vessel costs Navy 10,000 US dollars daily in maintenance. Cardoso leak inflation to fill 10 trillion Naira intervention funds and CBN overdraft. Nigerians' confidence in anti draft war toilet. And then we have Moplex Boss Rally support for PTV sector hills reps. On minimum wage, Tinubu Labour leaders party inconclusive to continue next week. And on craft charges, Gandoji, wife, and others to face trial in October. On local government autonomy, why local government have not escaped powerful claps of governors? More detail on page six. Here we have a filthy abattoir on hygienic meat. Filthy abattoirs on hygienic meat processing spike their health concern. Where we're seeing an infographic here saying feeding the nation from underbelly of Nigerian's meat market. And then we're seeing the kind of giving us a, a little picture of the meat van and then some of the unhealthy meat we have been um, consuming and the fact that something needs to be done about that where we have people going around to be sure that the meat that Nigerians are actually taking is actually a very great and also a hygienic meat. And that's all on Guardian newspaper. The Punch newspaper, we have local government funds, FG Floors governors as Supreme Court outlaws caretaker ESCO joint accounts. Preventing democratically elected administration and local government unconstitutional says the supreme court and tinibu nlc nulge others hail judgment ex ogun local government chair loads pre precedent from the top of the paper we have fgiocs agreed on crude supply to dangote and local refineries public officials received 721 billion naira bribe in 2023 this is coming from nbs report if you're interested you can find more details on page 27 33 billion naira fraud ex-power minister collapses before trial remanded in prison national assembly decries unlawful detention of journalists and the down part of the paper we have minimum wage tinibu labor talks adjourn till next week uk varsity reviews fees for nigerian students facing expulsion can find more details on page seven. Lagos Marwa operate to hang self over tricycle seizure. If you are, if you are interested, you can find more details on page four. And on politics, PDP alleges contempt as Aida Tiwa appoints council caretakers. These are all the news stories you can find on the Punch newspaper. Right before we continue further with the paper review, we would love to take a break to let you show the stories. What do you feel about the meeting between Labour and federal government, even though they're yet to come to a conclusion? As well as we've seen that the Supreme Court verdict concerning the local government autonomy is the fact that the local government will have their funds straight into their account. What do you think this will mean for the federal system and as well as what would it mean for the state and local government as well so we would love to hear your own views when we come back from this time out please stay tuned with us democracy is the theory that common people know what they want and deserve to get it good and hard join me every friday 7 p.m on national talk for analysis as well as in-depth perspective on issues as they unfold in and around nigeria as well as an opportunity to add your voice.
Make your everyday informative. Make your everyday count. Know your world, daily affairs, national and international, with authentic news events as they unfold on Global News and Zoom on Nigeria, Monday to Friday at 1 p.m. Welcome back. It's still the dailies. We have been looking at a number of stories during the paper review, and we would love to hear your own feedbacks concerning that. Please, so do remember to drop your opinion on our Facebook and on our YouTube. I still have Lois with me. Thank you so much, Lois. Right? Thank you, Sarah. All right, let's continue with the paper review, looking at the daily independent newspaper. And the IC to prosecute the records management over collapse of Heritage Bank. High interest rate outcome of huge money supply in the system coming from the CBN governor. And the big news, mixed reaction trade Supreme Court ruling on local government physical autonomy. Apex Court bars governors from dissolving elected local government council. Only elected officials will control local government allocation coming from Tunibu. Atik would describe judgment as a win for the people of Nigeria. Better late than never, LP commenced Supreme Court judgment, ruling severe setback on the principles of federalism. You can find that on page 29. Supreme Court judgment, still, we are having Serap gives governors and the FCT minister seven days to return local government funds. And coming from Kogi Guber, appeal court upholds Odudu's election, dismisses Ajaka's Petition, data found on page 6. Alleged 33 billion naira fraud, ex minister collapses before arrangement, remanded in Kuji prison. Reps fly depriving journalists their constitutional rights, and we have governors to meet review Supreme Court verdict on local government autonomy. I am committed to realistic minimum wage coming from the president, Tinibu. Labour meets the president again next week after tabling economic hardship. And coming from the NLC here, they're saying Supreme Court judgment on local government area restoration of democracy. Data found on page 7, and that's all in the independent newspaper. Let's look at the Vanguard newspaper. From the top, we have Dangote Refinery. Federal government producers agree to supply crude, enhance domestic refining. And Edo 2024, Obasa Kino raised 20 man transition committee. You can find more details on page 7. On inflation, we're suffering for ways and means loan. This is coming from Cardoso and Zenith Bank's Capital Market today. We have the picture story there. On executive order, drug makers seek clear timelines. Table Naira for 70% production. The writer says maintain non-implementation hampering coys placing order on importation of raw materials and others say unless naira value was fixed local drug manufacturing a mirage supreme court verdicts on local government autonomy who've taken judgment in good faith governor saludo and all to say you can find more details on page five Alleged 33 billion naira fraud, ex power minister Mammon slums in court before trial. You can find more details on page six. And uh, we have uh, on sports, Super Falcons camp swells as Kanu Ohezo arrive. And we have uh, down part of the paper, we have Edo will be okay. This is coming from Olumide. Aquata. and these are all the news stories you can find on the vanguard newspaper
A new Telegraph newspaper, crude oil, five month decline threatening federal government revenue pro projection. Beta fun in the paper. Kadusu here is saying sustained NPR hike helped to stabilize the Naira. More data found on page 25. As well, still on the paper, we have Senate reject bill to regulate FX market in Nigeria. Rep flays in Susan arrest of journalists, and we have Ganduji wife and others to be tried in absentia as court rules against breach warrants. The rate of bribery drops in Nigeria by 0.8% coming from the MBS Modita found on page 26 and 30. Constitutional right, which is a big story, Supreme Court frees 774 local governments from governor's grip, grant financial autonomy to council, bars governors from dissolving democratically elected local government allocations to be paid directly into the local government account. People will now hold local leaders to account, coming from Tinibu, and we have judgment victory for democracy, coming from Senator Kalu. Nigeria's problem now half soft, of course, I believe that, coming from Nuge, and we have other writer following that story, so you can find more details of that on page 2, 3, 6, 28, 29, and 30. And on Samoa Agreement, Catholic Bishops Islamic Forum Kick says it's threat to Nigerian sovereignty and values. Alleged 33 billion Nero fraud ex-power minister Mama remanded in Kuje prison. Dongote refinery to get fresh 11 million barrels of crook from US. King and President sack cabinet after anti-tax protests. More detail found on page 4. Coming from the defense headquarters, terrorists planning to attack critical infrastructure nationwide, says security agency plays on a lot. And on minimum wage, be realistic in your expenditures. I take that again on minimum wage, be realistic in your expenditures. Coming from Tinibu telling labor, urges some um, suggests reduction in negotiation and time frame. Both parties to meet again next week. More detail found concerning the expectations coming from labor. And on study here, we have reduced meat intake can lower diabetes and cancer risks. Reducing meat intake can lower diabetes and cancer risks. So for those who are diabetic and also if you want to avoid cancer, it's important that you reduce your intake of red meat. So more detail of the story can be found on page 29, and that's on the New Telegraph newspaper. Moving to the metrics new paper, from the top we have FG unveils free CNG conversion center across Nigeria. And inside the paper, you will see the full list. We have Euro 2024 final, that was sports. England have to be perfect to beat Spain, says Southgate. For sports lovers, you can find more details on page 16. Here we have new minimum wage, no deal yet between Tinibu and Labour says, I'm concerned about the welfare of Nigerian workers, but says Tinibu, things are difficult for Nigerian workers. This is coming from NLC. You can find more details on page 3. Despite fainting, judge sends ex-power minister Mammon to Kuje prison. Governor Aliu signs Chief Tennessee Bill Barring Sultan from appointing village and district head. You can find more details on page 3 on local government autonomy judgment. Tinibu Hill Supreme Court says it will ensure elected local officials will control the people's resources. Our people can now hold their local leaders to account for actions and inactions. A rep speaker Abbas, ex-vice president Atiku, others hail ruling. Ibori Kicks says judgment stands true federalism on its head. If you're interested, you can find more details on page 2. Appeal Court upholds Ododo's election as Kogi governor and federal government oil producers agree over delivery of crude oil to local refineries. Senate confirms Argungu Namani as PSC chairman and secretary. You can find more details on page 8 of Metrics newspaper. And um, the picture story of not a laughing matter for labor. We have Festus or C4, TUC President Joe Ajayro, NLC President. 
We have President Bola Ahmed Tinibu and Inkiruka Onye Georgia, Minister of State for Labour, after a meeting at the State House in Abuja on Wednesday. And we have Nollywood veteran actor Olu Jacobs marks 82nd birthday. These are all the news stories you can find on the Metrics newspaper. And on first news newspaper, court sent ex power minister Mamam to Kujay prison over alleged 33.8 billion naira fraud. On the answers, DJ Sweet celebrates ECOWAS court victory because we will recall he's part of the beneficiaries that will be paid a 2 million naira compensation during the hashtag answers protests. 70% of Nigerians refused to pay bribes in 2023, coming from MBS as a report. And we see Senate shoots down bill to boost external reserves with gold. And on Supreme Court frees local government from bondage. That is the big news here, where we have birth governors from accessing, interfering with local government funds, dissolving council. And we also have Tinibu and Atiku hails the judgment. Showdown as Asu Rock, showdown at Asu Rock, labor in season 250,000 minimum as stocks with Tinibu continues. I'm committed to a fair, realistic minimum wage Tinibu pledges, and we can see the picture story showing the president with the labor leaders in Abuja during their discussion on the minimum wage yesterday. Military hands over 277 victims rescued from Boko Haram to Borno government. And we're seeing that Abia Governor Oti launches 1 billion naira interest free loan scheme for macro businesses. More detail concerning that can be found in the paper. And that's all on First News newspaper. On the Daily News Hub. We have Ope Bolo campaign managers allege fight over campaign funds. Shameful. This is coming from Edo Youth. Say incident on becoming of governorship candidates. On Supreme Court judgment that says governors WK must return 40 trillion naira local government funds. This is coming from Serap. And we have comply within seven days or risk legal action. Group warns 50% of Nigeria's problems solved by judgment and NULGA. This is coming from NULGA. And Apex Court's verdict has restored hope in democracy. NLC says Cardoso blames Nigeria's rising inflation on Buhari's 27 trillion naira, 10 trillion naira waste, and means Samoa agreement seek amendment or withdraw assent. Catholic bishops tell federal government. Tinibu Atiku Hill Supreme Court verdict on local government autonomy. PDP kicks as Aida Tsiwa names transition committees for Ondo local government, LCDAs, and Senate in emergency executive session as Apabio Lawan clash over seating time. 33 billion naira fraud, how sacked minister standing trial for fraud collapsed outside court and judge remands him in prison. On new minimum wage, the new NLC TUC meeting inconclusive. Labour insists on 250,000 naira. And President urges Labour leaders to be realistic with their expectations. And there, the picture story of the meeting yesterday. And then we can see reps condemn unlawful arrest, detention of journalists. And that's all the news stories on Daily News Hub. Let's take a look at Nigerian News Direct newspaper. Etel unveils smart router where you can find on page 23. And a secretive search FGM proceeds in Oshun hidden communities coming from this is an investigation concerning that. NDDC commences emergency repair of East West Road. Court remand ex power minister in Kujay prison adjourns his case. And on minimum wage, Tinibu labor meeting ends in deadlock to resume talks next week. 774 local government areas gain financial autonomy as Supreme Court orders direct allocation of funds. Apex Court ordered direct allocation of 20.6% Federation accounts to LGAs. People can now hold local leaders accountable. Atiku Hill's ruling calls it victory for Nigerians. 
return LGA Fund of Faith Legal Action, Serap tell 36 governors in Wiki. We have two pictures, story one coming from Moyo State, where we can see Governor Shei Makindi and another concerning the market D for Zenith Bank, and that's all on Nigerian News Direct. The Sporting Sun, we have D. Messi Blessed Baby Yamal and CR 7 23 24 season, one of my best. Haaland becomes most expensive player ever. You can find more details on page 2 of Sporting Sun. The big story, we have NFF contacts Harvey Renard to coach Super Eagles. You can find more details on page 6. Mbappe's real shirt smashes, smashes record. Bellingham, Vinicius Jr. in fierce race for Ballon d'Or. And Zidane's son beats Real Madrid farewell. We have Super Falcons to have full camp today. And you can find more details on page 6. Dresses rumored move to Siri aside the bong. We have, you can find more details on page 6. And then we have PSG, Kin on Osimen. You can find more details still on page 6 of the Sporting Sun. We have Foden Dreams, Euro Glory, and Real Madrid yet to announce Hendrick's jersey number. Nones Rick's lengthy ban. And the last story here says Murray lined up for shock Wimbledon comeback. And that's all the news stories you can find on Sporting Sun. All right, let's round it up with the Business Day newspaper. Weekly billion dollar crypto transaction come under federal government scrutiny. You can read that on the front page and continue on page 31. Investor confidence back at CBN class backlog. 27 trillion naira ways and means. 10 trillion naira intervention on pending economy coming from Cardoso. As well, we are seeing that Ajay Raw City PWC advocate new economic models. More details found in the paper. Dongote refinery seek fresh 11 million barrels of U.S. crude as Nigeria struggles. Nigerians hail Supreme Court judgment on local government autonomy. And we have fiscal deficit drops to 6.9 trillion naira as devaluation boosts revenue data fund on page 30 and that's all on business day newspaper as well as how far we can go on the program this morning thank you for doing this with me Lois. thank you Stella, for having thank me. you to our viewers thank you to our followers thank you as well to the entire crew for making this program a success we look forward again to doing this next week to have a great weekend ahead